Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing us in with your brother this week. Family, two weeks. Two weeks to the royal gathering. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm excited. I am so excited. It is one thing to do this every week and be here with you, but it's something so different. Just the, the, the energy and the atmosphere when we are all together. And that's what we are going to be doing at the royal gathering. We're going to be right there in each other's face, bringing this word out. And then, of course, you will have the opportunity to be able to congregate with the rest of Israel right here in the royal family. We will meet each other face to face, grab a hand, hug a neck, hug each other, whichever one it is. All I know is that I am excited and I cannot wait to meet each and every last one of you family. Tonight, I got to get a drink first. Wait a minute. I got to get a drink. Mm. Tonight. Now, we're going to be talking about something here that is, um, it needs to be discussed. Let me be very honest. Israel, we are getting very comfortable, very, very comfortable, very complacent, and very used to the way that we are living on this planet. There's a problem with that. There's a huge problem. You know what that problem is? We're not supposed to be living like this. And yet we have so many of our people, and I'm talking about people in the truth, that are so comfortable with our conditions to the point to where they're not even really caring about being in the truth anymore. And that is the truth. Mm-hmm. They get in here, get in the truth. They are on fire for some time. And then that fire slowly starts to burn out. And then when it finally does burn out, it takes a lot to get them back. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is nobody responsible, no one responsible for getting you back on track once you have been told. It's just like the father said. He said, if you go back out into that world, it's like a dog that is returning to its vomit. OK, so with that being said, let's go ahead and open our Bibles to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha, and we are going to be reading from Lamentations chapter 2. And we're going to take a detour a little bit after so that we can break some things down because Lamentations chapter 2 is parallel to another book that's in the Bible and something that we went over not that long ago. All right, so let's go ahead and get this popping. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty, the beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger? Because remember, the father said the world is his footstool. He said the world is his footstool. That says so much just by itself. That the God of Israel is so big, so almighty that the earth, what we think is vast, is a footstool to him. Think about that. But do you see also what it says in here as far as the beauty of Israel? We are beautiful. Look how he talks about his family. He said beautiful. The beauty of Israel. The beauty of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Come on now. We know that's true. Verse 2. The Lord hath swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob and hath not pitied. Now that's dangerous. He hath thrown down in his wrath the stronghold of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. Now the father made it very clear. He said, first and foremost, I made y'all beautiful. I made you beautiful, but I had to remove that beauty. You know why? Because y'all are disobedient. Not only are you disobedient, but you're also disrespectful. You are stiff-necked, rebellious children. That's what the father said. 
He said, we are stiff necked and rebellious. And he said, I had to remove your beauty from you. I had to dominate and take you out of your habitations because you have to remember family. This is not just talking about some ordinary homes. We were living in mansions, castles. We lived in the best on earth. And this was only for a time. Because remember, the fatness of the earth was given unto Esau. But they weren't in rulership yet, though. But when it came to Israel, we had the best. We had it all. And then we had it all taken away because of our disobedience. And this is what I am trying to remind of our people. We are still in a state of disobedience. We are still in a state where the father has his back turned to us. He's like, I'm not dealing with y'all, but I'm dealing with the ones who are keeping my commandments, the ones who are carrying out my will. And that's a place where you want to be. And as you see here, he said, I cut the kingdom off from y'all niggas. He said, I cut it off. I took it all from you. You don't deserve it because you're stiff necked, rebellious, disobedient children. And many of us marvel in that today. Verse three. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy, and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoureth round about. Now, let's break that one down there for a second. Now, the father said, first and foremost, you know, like how when you go, you punch something, the father said, first, he said, I'm putting my hand down and I'm dropping it. Can you imagine the most high punching somebody in their face? Just think about that for a second. The most high lighting our enemies up. And he said, nope, I'm going to let your enemies, I'm going to let them whoop you. I'm going to let your enemies whoop up on you because you deserve it. You disrespectful, rebellious, stiff-necked children. He said, all I'm trying to do is to get y'all to keep the commandments that I gave you. And you won't even do that. You look at me in my face and you tell me no. Woo! Man, man, man. And as he said that there is a fire that burns in his anger round about. That means that's all around us. Everything that we try to do, everything that we say, everything that we try to accomplish. If we are not following the father and doing his work and doing the things that he told us to do, he said that's it's not going to prosper. Mm. It is what it is because the father said this and we have to get back to listening to the father. All right, verse four, he hath bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was an enemy. He have swallowed up Israel. Listen to this family. This is everything that we are going through today. This is everything that we experience. Everything. All the way from when brothers walk out the house in the morning, get in their car, and we are looking over shoulder to shoulder to make sure that there's nobody coming out to attack us. Then we act, when we start driving the car, we are making sure that there's no cops following us. For you sisters, you trying to make sure that there's no brothers or somebody from the other nations coming up to rob you, to throw you in your car, break into your car, break into your house, have their way with you. There's so many things that's going on with us when our children go out and our children can't even enjoy being children because we are sitting up under these curses and these children are wondering whether or not if they're going to get shot and robbed or stabbed or something the father said he brought all of this down on israel and we are still suffering from it and the more and more we suffer it's like the more comfortable we get i don't understand it i really really don't let me read this again the lord was an enemy he have swallowed up israel he have swallowed up all her palaces. Do y'all see that? We're not talking about the projects. We are not even talking about the big mansion in Beverly Hills. The father said palaces. Our people, we don't understand where we came from. We have no idea what it was like for us living on this planet because the only thing that we know is what we've been taught 
from slavery all the way down. So when we go back, well, excuse me, when some of us, because there are many of us that are educated about our past, but there are some of us that when we think back, the only thing that we think about is slavery. We think about the shack. We think about us being in shacks, living in dirt, tattered clothes, and getting just a little sprinkle of peanuts, the scraps off the table, us living like dogs when it was the other way around, all the other nations, including Esau. And if you don't know who Esau is, it means white people. All of them were eating from our table. They were eating the scraps. And now we have been reduced to that. It's the absolute truth. Whether you choose to believe it or not, that doesn't matter. It's true. I'm going to start from five at the top again. The Lord was an enemy. He have swallowed up Israel. He have swallowed up all, all her palaces. He have destroyed his strongholds and have increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. Who do you do it to first? Judah. Why Judah? Come on now. Negroes. The so-called Negroes of the earth. It's time for you to open your ears. Clean that wax out. Why? Why is everything happening to us? Because we are the ones in charge. We are the ones that's supposed to be making the most high God look absolutely fabulous. But yet we make ourselves look absolutely disgusting. All the way to the point where the father's like, I'm not even being associated with y'all. I turn my back on y'all. Y'all are not my kids. Mm -mm. Yeah, nah, my kids will do me better than this. My kids will understand that I gave them the world. I made the world for their sakes. My kids understand that all throughout this Bible, I told them that they are the greatest and the most special people, and they are the most holy people. They are a separate people. They're not even human beings. They're gods. I made all of you gods, but yet, yet you treat me like I'm the devil. It's our people, our people. Now, I want to do something here really quick because you've heard this chapter before. Let's get the definition of lamentation. Let's get the definition of what does it mean? Watch this. Lamentation. The passionate expression of grief, sorrow, or weeping. It says the passionate expression of grief, sorrow, and weeping. That's what Lamentations is all about. That's what we are reading right now, that we are in great sorrow and weeping. Now, let's see what the next one says. Watch this, because it mentioned us specifically. A book of the Bible telling of the desolation of Judah after the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC. So even in definition, this definition, this book called the dictionary, a literary resource knows exactly who we are in this book. <laughs> and our people still struggle, still out there living and struggling. And yet the book is telling us everything. All right, verse six, let's get it. And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord hath caused the solemn feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion and have despised in the indignation of his anger in the king and the priest. The father's making it known. He's like, with Judah? He's like, yeah, I'm pissed with y'all. Mm, mm -hmm. He said, my beautiful black people, the tribe of Judah, the Negro, he said, I made y'all in charge of everything. And this is what you do. This. Y'all really have to start waking up and seeing exactly the, the, the picture that the father has painted for black people, for us, for us. We are viewed as the absolute lowest people on the planet, but we know that we're not. Everything that happens on the planet when it comes to finances, when it comes to fashion, when it comes to societal disagreements, all of these things, all, they're always centered around us. And I'm going to talk a lot more about this at the gathering, but all of the lessons that I'm doing right now is a buildup 
to the gathering. Just to let y'all know. All right. Verse eight. The Lord, the Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He hath stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he made the rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. Verse nine. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He have destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Right there. This is the killer. This is the killer verse in this whole chapter. I'm going to read it one more time. And then we're going to take a detour, family. Watch this. Watch this. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He have destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles, meaning the other nations. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. So now let's go back one verse here. Let's go back to this verse so that you can have a very, very clear understanding of what this is saying. Very, very clear. All right. I want to go back up to verse six. Let's go back to verse six. Watch this. And he had violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord hath caused the solemn feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion and have despised in the indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. So now that we have that and we just read verse nine, we're going to go to the book of second Maccabees chapter six and verse six. And this is in the Apocrypha, the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6. As a matter of fact, no, 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 no. Let's go to verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. Being that we just read all of that, let's go to verse 1, the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. We'll read it down to 6. Many of you already know what we're getting ready to read, but there's many of you that don't. So let's just do it. All right, 2 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. It is also found in the records, meaning that there is an actual record of this event taking place, meaning it was 100% real. It is also found in the records that Jeremy, the prophet, Jeremiah, commanded them that were carried away to take of the fire as it hath been signified. We've been reading about that, haven't we? Yes, we have. Verse two, and how that the prophet Having given them the law, which we just read about, remember? And what he said, the least that the law is no more. Charge them not to forget the commandments of the Lord and that they should not err, meaning error, in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. And with others such speeches exhorted he them that the law should not depart from their hearts. It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet being warned of God commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him. And as he went, excuse me, as he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of God. And who is that? That's us. Here we go. And when Jeremy came thither, he found an hollow cave wherein he laid the tabernacles and the ark and the altar of incense and so stopped the door. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it, which when Jeremy perceived, he blamed them, saying, as for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that God gather his people again together and receive them unto mercy. Then shall the Lord shew them these things and the glory and the Lord shall appear and the cloud also. Remember, we read all of this here just earlier. As it was showed under Moses and when Solomon desired that the place might be 
honorably sanctified, it was also declared that he being wise offered the sacrifice of dedication and the finishing of the temple. So now this is why I wanted to read 2 Maccabees chapter um chapter 2 because from here you get to see the history this is not brought out enough but as you clearly clearly see with this the most high is making it known unto judah and showing exactly who the players are of course we know that moses is from the tribe of levi but who did the responsibility go to it went to judah and this is our history and this is why I'm reading this here to you. This is our history. You got to understand where you come from, family. If you don't understand where you come from, you can you, you will never know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, it means that you don't have any direction. And if you don't have any direction, absolutely nobody should be following you. Nobody should be following you if you don't know where you're going and you don't have any direction. It's the blind leading the blind and you're going to fall right into the ditch, right into that ditch. So now that was 2 Maccabees 2. Now let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 1. So now that you had that little bit of history, and I'm telling you, get into reading our book, your history. Now let's go ahead. 2 Maccabees chapter 6. Now, remember everything that we was reading in Lamentation, right? While the father, when he said he was taking everything away, watch this. Not long after this, the king sent an old man to Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. Did we not just read that? Verse two. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympius and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. This is happening to Israel. Here it is. These Edomites are now coming into the temples, into the tabernacles and doing disgusting, unspeakable things. Let's continue. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with the women, had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places and besides that brought in things that were not lawful. The altar, the altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Just like we read in Lamentations. This is everything that the father said. Everything said by the father can be backed up. And all you got to do is read the book. Let's go back. Lamentations chapter two. Go down to verse nine. Now that we read that. Now that we read that, let's read chapter uh, two and verse nine again. Watch this. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He have destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. There it is. The law is no more like we just read. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Why? The most high is gone. Turned his back on a disobedient children. The father allowed Esau to come in there. He allowed the Jews, which is us, to be compelled. And to be compelled means to be forced. And the father who chose Esau to be the whipping rod to Israel. It is what it is. Verse 10. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. And virgin does not mean a... It does not mean an unsexually active person. A virgin, according to the scriptures, means a young lady. That's all it means. A young lady. Verse 11. Mine eyes do fill with tears. 
fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people because the children, because the children and the sucklings swoon in the streets of the city that cannot talk about anybody else but our people. Mm -hmm. We know good and damn well Esau is not out there in them streets. Esau is in the house before the street lights come on. They don't play around. What do they do? They party inside. They party on the ground. They go to their little off places, their little sneaky snake little places, and that's where they party. And we all know what their parties entail. No, thank you. But for us, we out there in them streets. We always out there in them streets. You can't deny the Bible. You can't deny it. This is our book. <laughs> Verse 12. They say, to their mothers, where is corn and wine? Because you know what that was? Corn and wine? Tithes. Those are actual tithes. So you got the children asking the mothers. They say to their mothers, where is the corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets of the city. The wounded, the wounded, the wounded, the wounded. We're not out there partying. We're out there dying in them streets. You can't, you can't, you can't deny the Bible. When their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What? Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk about that for a second. Let's read that one more time. Verse 12. Cause I don't think a lot of people got that. Let's, let's get this. They say to their mothers, where is the corn and wine? Where are our benefits at? Where are our ties? Where are our blessings? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets. That's talking about young black men and black women, young Hispanic men, young Hispanic women, young Native American men, young Native American women that go out there in them streets, get shot, get stabbed. The next thing you know, they out there bleeding. They call the mother outside. The mother is outside. Oh, my baby, my baby. You know what I'm saying? And all that's going on. This is what the Bible's talking about. That doesn't happen to Esau. That's us. That's our people. <laughs> You see what happens when you actually start reading the scriptures? The scriptures break down exactly who it's talking about. And it's talking about our people. Verse 13. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee? O daughter of Jerusalem, what shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee? O virgin daughter of Zion, for thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. And oh, Lord, let me tell you, that's absolutely true. To sit and watch our people do the most ridiculous, hurtful, idiotic things that they can possibly do. I'm talking about doing this to each other. Do you know how bad it is? You can tell you how bad it is. Remember last week? Remember those videos that I showed last week? Do you know they put an age restriction on those? And those were the light of the videos that I was going to show. Just so that YouTube wouldn't trip, but they still went ahead and tripped. But it goes to show you just how destroyed we are as a people. That they won't even show. And of course, when it comes to Esau, they, they love showing us. They love showing us acting up. But now they're getting to the point where like, we can't even show these niggas acting up because of the things that they're doing to each other. And that's a damn shame. Verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. <laughs> All that pass by. Clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem saying, is this this city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Are y'all realizing what's being said right now? Straight up. 
Because you know when these other nations and when they see us and they see just how beautiful our people are. And I'm going to take a minute now because it's about to be a lot of y'all that's about to be mad at me right now. But let me tell you something. I don't give a damn if you get mad at me or not. Because first and foremost, I'm going to take everything right back to these scriptures. First and foremost, the father said that he made us beautiful. He said we are beautiful because we look like him. He designed us after him. So now when we have our people that go out there and dress foolishly, not only dress foolishly, but I'm sorry, sisters, I'm going to have to get on you here for a second. And it's not just you. I'll get on the brothers in a second too. But when it comes to you, sisters, I'm sorry, these brand new helmets that y'all have, you, these are not even weaves anymore. I have seen videos where they're picking up whole heads and putting it on. That's not natural. I don't give a damn what you say. It's not natural. The Brazilian butt lifts, I didn't, I didn't like it when they first came out. If you're a woman, just be natural. Be what, be what the father made you. Be what he made you. All that fake crap, you don't need. You don't need it. Because the father don't make any mistakes. He does not make mistakes. And he did not make any when he made you. And even for the brothers, you know, brothers are now getting implants. Do you know, I see niggas walk around, they got, they got breast implants. And they put implants in their, in their, their biceps and in their calves and everything. I'm like, nigga, what's wrong with you? What the hell is wrong? Like, nigga, stop. Come on now. What's, dude, stop. And they be thinking that they look dope, too. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> they be thinking they look good. <laughs> Let me not say nothing else, because I, I know I'm going to really piss somebody off if I say the things that are that are right here. The intrusive thoughts, they're not going to win tonight. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go now to verse 16. <laughs> All right. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found. We have seen it. Remember in Judith? Do you remember in the book of Judith? When they said, listen, all we have to do is to keep them from not serving their God. That's all we have to do. Get them to not serve their God and we win. That's documented in the book of Judith family. This is, I'm reading the Bible. This is the Bible that I'm reading. Not some false text. The father told you everything that they were going to do and they're doing it. They did it and we are in those conditions today. You can't get any better than that. And you cannot ask the father to give us anything better. Verse 17, the Lord have done that which he has devised. You see, this is all the, this is all the most high is doing. He has fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down, he, excuse me, and hath not pitied, and he hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thine adversaries. He for damn sure did, because we are getting our asses handed to us by Esau. Not only by Esau, but Moab. Not only by Moab, but also by Ammon. Not only Ammon, but also by the children of Japheth, the children of Ham, all over. All nations have a toe in our ass because there's so many feet in them so many and the father said he was going to allow that to happen why because we are disrespectful disobedient rebellious stiff necked children and until we change is going to remain that way Verse 18, their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Is it something about niggas being out in the streets? Mm. Something about the children of Israel being out in the streets that the father keeps bringing back. You see how 
when the father said pride comes before a fall and how Esau, they're always out there. They have tour buses that go through the hood and they be in there and be like, aren't y'all glad we don't have to live like this? And they do all that stupidity and nonsense. And the father has all of that documented right here in these scriptures. He said, they're going to laugh at us. They're going to marvel at us. We will be an astonishment to everybody around the globe, everybody. And that's exactly what it is. There are times when I sit here and I look at it and I'm so ashamed, but then I know that it's our people and it makes me so proud. It really, really does. Because it's like in the end, we all know what's up. But when you get there, where will you be? On what side of the fence will you be on? Are you going through the gates or are you going to have to be outside in that fire? That's the question that I ask our people. Verse 20. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the women eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men. You see right there, it explains. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pity. That's everything that's happening today. These cops can't keep bullets out of us. They can't keep their knees off of our necks. They continue to target our sisters and brainwash our sisters to screw our men over by the court system, by the judicial system. And they are two different things. Between the court system and the judicial system are two different things. Two different types of judgment that's placed on us. Then you have us just having to deal with the police. Then you have us having to deal with everybody else on our jobs, then we have to deal with each other. Verse 21. The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. And yes, I'm reading it again. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. We are out there getting killed, getting slain by the other nations and by each other. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pity. The father like, I don't feel bad for y'all. Keep my commandments and come home. Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about. Y'all hear what the father is saying? He's saying my terrors round about because we forgot that the most high is not only a wonderful God, but a terrible God. Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger none escaped, nor remain those that I have swaddled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed. All praises to the Most High. The Father said, I'm not letting nobody off the hook. He said, everybody catching it. Everybody. He said, everybody is going to catch it. Can you blame him? I most certainly can't. I can't and won't. This is all up to us. Family, the father is like, once y'all get y'all minds right and do what y'all are supposed to do, keep my commandments, my laws and my statutes, and I will turn back to you and I will destroy your enemies. But most people think this is a fairy tale. They don't take the Bible seriously. They don't take people like me seriously. They don't take people like you seriously. They don't take themselves seriously. They don't take the most high seriously. Every person that walks into a church on Sunday does not take the most high seriously. Every person that decides that they want to walk into Bible study on Wednesday, they do not take Yahawashai seriously. They don't take any of this seriously. So they for damn sure are not going to take you serious. But it doesn't mean that you stop the work. You continue. You continue because you don't know what seed is going to sprout. There are many seeds thrown out there. And I'm talking about in agriculture. There's so many seeds that are thrown out. But do they all grow? The answer is no. Some of them seeds are already dead. They have no life in them. But you don't know who the father is going to raise up. That is why it is so important that you do what you have to do. You have to do 
your part. If you don't do your part, you will have no kingdom. I'm telling y'all right now, I cannot stress this enough. You don't do your part. You don't do what you're supposed to do in the kingdom and you're going to die and burn right along with everybody else. So this is why I'm telling you, you got to get up. You have to get off of your ass, get on your feet and walk to that destruction. And they're called our people. You have to. If you don't, that's it. It's over for you. There will be no kingdom. Family, I love you guys so much. And that's it. We're done. We're done. Done for the night. Remember, it's the Sabbath. Go rest. Rest on this day. We just congregated. Now it's time for you to rest. So family, once again, for those who are going to be at the gathering, 14 days, and I can't wait to see y'all. I can't wait to link back up with all my brothers and sisters. And we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful show that's coming up. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Oh, my goodness. And we just got some new additions to it as well. It is going to be absolutely awesome. So remember, family, the Royal Gathering, be there, be there, be there. And if you can't be there in person, remember, it is going to be streaming on our platform. So let me shut up. Family, it's over. Go rest. And with that being said, Andrew, I love you. I'm out.